We're rolling. Okay. Well, well, what we got? We're gonna look. Where? I didn't. Uh, I didn't have any RG8X. So what we're gonna handle tonight is 58 and 213. But 58 and RG8X do the same. The only difference. The only difference will be the. The. Uh, the, the adapter. You see the difference in the two. The smaller ones for the 58 and the larger ones for the 8x. So that's the only, it's the only difference between those two two uh, uh, types of coax. Uh, and like I said, these these are the crimp-ons, and they're pretty easy. They're they're a lot easier than uh, than uh, uh, any of the rest of them. You. Prepare it just like you would any of the rest of them, but once you get that, you just slip the. I didn't even bring the crimpers with me because I didn't plan on crimping any. You put it over there and you crimp it. Then you, I solder the end of it. You, it's set up to actually the crimper has a spot to where you can actually crimp the end of it. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. and it's good. And it's only it's only good for. Uh, it's supposed to be only good for coax with solid with a solid center conductor. If, and then most of everything else I've got here, like this, still 58, but it's got a, uh, so what you do is I've got a, I've got a, I don't know whether it's, I think it's an eighth inch, no, it's not an eighth inch bit. It's less, it's, it's smaller than an eighth inch bit. Uh, I don't know, and I just take it and drill, drill that drill this out and uh, so I can get the the uh, braided through it and then do the same thing mm -hmm. and, and like I said earlier uh, when I had when I had the uh, radio shop at, at, at uh, Bell South uh, whenever we, we ordered we ordered exclusively from Motorola and when they sent us an antenna each one of the antennas had a PL had a PL 259 and a reducer and we used to throw those over in a box and then we'd get these crimp-ons because that was a job security <laughs> because you knew if you put one in there eventually it was going to fail and so it gave us you know we had to give us work to do and because um, we had gosh I don't know how many mobiles we had probably <sighs> In the Memphis area, we probably had 70, 70 mobiles, and then we had, uh, I also uh, did the IMTS mobile telephone, and so we probably had another 35 of those, and uh, so we had, you know, we had to have a little job security, and uh, so that worked good, and then when we closed down the radio shop, there was a box full <laughs> of PL259s, and and uh, the people that closed down the radio, instead of getting me to close it down, knowing what I knew about what was salvageable and what wasn't, if it wasn't what we call what they called uh, 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 capital equipment, stuff that was on the books with serial numbers and everything else went in the dumpster. Even even good even good test equipment that had long overdone its usage and we'd gotten new but I kept the other for uh, so we could have a uh, if we got a bunch of radios in at one time instead of having one guy working one radio at a time we could put another guy working in another radio. So anyway make a long story short I got a couple of good pieces of test equipment in that box PL259s and about 40 uh, brand spanking new Motorola VHF antennas, mobile antennas. Uh, and I sold every one of those PL 259s, a little over 200 of them. Uh, I sold every one of them to uh, Memphis Amateur Electronics, 50 cents a piece, and he was selling them for back in those days about a buck and a half a piece. So we all came out good. Mm -hmm. Don't tell anybody that though. No, you didn't I hear it from me. <laughs> uh, all right. So, like I said, if you're if you're in a new and ham radio, or you've got aspirations to put up a lot of antennas and all so forth and so on 
you need to buy one of these. Uh, this is the easiest way to strip coax that I've ever seen. Uh, now, if you're using foam, if you're using foam, uh, did I bring a piece of foam? Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is this is foam. Got a this is soft foam, and it works real good. You can you can use a uh, once you once you get into that that you can use a pair of these to strip the foam off. Uh, this one, if you look in the end of it, you've got a a um, what they call a solid dielectric, and that is a booger to get off. You can't use one of those and pull it off. What you'll end up doing is pulling that centerpiece of that coax all the way out. Okay, so that's that's the, that's the problem with it because you end up what I used to do is I, I ended up cutting it off, and uh, that's a pain too. Do you get it down thin enough to where you can uh, maneuver it off? This. Um, well, let's see. And if you look on this thing, it has first cut and then you the second cut. And you put the first cut in there. And what kind of coax is that? Do we what? what kind of coax is that you're, you're This working? is 213. 213, okay. Used to be RG8. Used to be RG8, okay. Uh, 213 was the military nomenclature from it. Now you can see what it's doing. So I don't care. Almost. And you see it's cutting the it's cutting the center cutting the center dielectric also. Okay. Well, it didn't go all the way. But you see what you get. Normally you get a you get ones exactly the right length. I just I just stopped it too soon. Poor old hands. I just cannot grip stuff hardly anymore. So I have to, I have to improvise, adapt, and improvise. Now. Okay, now you go to the other end. Is that set to the right length or depth or whatever? Yeah, it's already set. This is designed for 213. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Now that's... <laughs> that's a lot easier the other way. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It most definitely is. And, of course, then... Always remember. Always remember. <laughs> you put that on first. <laughs> if you don't, you'll be sorry. So now, when you get it, get it like not that. Not the first time. You will from then on. And this is this is another indispensable tool right here. This is the only. This is the only problem that I. And I started to write to people and say, "Hey, you need to do something about it." But I said, "No, no, no. I'll let somebody that's a little more eloquent than me." <laughs> now, uh, this is a good PL259. I've got plenty of space that I can put a pair of long nose around it and unscrew it.
pass it around. <coughs> now the PL259 and the SO. All right, PL259 is the one that goes on the cable. Mm -hmm. And the SO239 is the one that goes on the radio. Are you, okay, so that's the difference. Okay, yeah. They're the same thing. They just yeah. aced each other. Okay. And I, you know, I took one out. I suppose I should have brought one. Uh, now, end connectors are in VNCs. I, I have never put one on, and I don't know of any reason why. You just use an adapter, right? You see. Yeah, I don't. I don't know of any reason why anybody would want to do it. Uh, we did it a lot uh, when I was working in, in when I went to Atlanta to work video uh, for the Olympics. We used a lot of those uh, B and C or uh, connectors like that, and uh, but they were all crimp-ons, and it was just easy to strip it and stick it in there and crimp it. So uh, uh, I brought some just to kind of show you what they are. You got plenty of adapters. Uh, that's and that adapts to an end, uh, and of course you got end connectors. I was telling them I don't know of any reason, unless you were uh, doing uh, weak signal stuff or, or microwave stuff that you would ever need an end connector. Yes. You're just doing two meters full forty. That's you know that's that that you, you ought to just use PL two fifty nines to be done with it. Yeah. Uh, they're, not, they're not much I difference. Mean, everything I've seen is used to uh, use it. If you want to go to B and C, you just use an adapter for the B and C. Yeah, right? well, that's what I say. I've got, yeah. I've got adapters there, and I've got that one to to the other. So you could use adapters if you can run across B and C. So you know, uh, like I've got adapters for ends too. The Icom 705 uses a B and yeah. C connector, so you'd use it. You'd need yeah. it for that. So. But I uh, I use I I, I, I don't. I've got both my repeaters use end connectors. I don't know why they just do. Yeah. And I've got, I just got, I just got adapters and adapters to uh, 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 PL259. So, so this is uh, this is expensive. They're about 70 bucks, but I'm going to tell you, <laughs> you know, first guy that introduced this to me, I said, ah, I do it with knife. But once I, once I used it, I said, nope, knife, the knife is being retired. <laughs> uh, and I've actually got, I bought, I bought the whole, I bought a whole kit. Yeah, I've seen those in, on DX yeah. and I thought, God, I'll have Here's, a, here's one for. I've got it, it yet to get this one to work on uh, uh, RG8 and stuff like. I don't use RG8, so or 8x. And then I have not. I just realized this one's got three. That one's it's pretty. Got, <laughs> it's got three cutters, and I'm not sure what this one is for. It it came in the. It says for 213, but it's probably for. A, something some other type of connector so i don't know what it is but it all came in the kit so i've got it now what was that black ring doing was that crimping or no 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 it's just seating it, it screws over this the threads uh -huh. unless you screw it on all right so if you got to screw, screw it on with your hands like this or a pair of pliers you're going to take forever so they give you something that gets that you Put your hands hands on and screw it on, and definitely, if you buy this, you definitely need to buy that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I can do, I can do RG8. I mean, uh, 58 and stuff like that with a knife. Probably as quick. As I hadn't figured out the, that one to use it yet. That just, I, I just, I've got one of these. This is what Motorola used to send us to do that, and, it, and we're going to get to that here in a minute. Now there's one one little secret here. You're gonna you're gonna solder in here, okay? Now you got chrome. You got chrome, and if anybody knows how about plating, these things are made out of a nickel steel type, and they plate it first with copper, and then they plate it with the chrome. 
So if you want to get the solder to stick pretty quick, you need to get rid of the chrome. So what you do, take a little file like this and just file off the chrome. Don't take too much, you'll take the copper too. Just kind of rough it up a little bit because they're both very thin layers. Just rough it up and then put your solder flux in there. And uh, don't even, don't even, uh, plug in your little 50 watt, 60 watt, 70 watt soldering iron because he ain't going to melt it. <laughs> now, if you're only doing two or three coaxes, you don't need to spend $175 for something like this. Uh, but as many coaxes I've done in years, especially when we were in business, because we sold, we sold coaxes, and for if you know any business, if you want me to put ends on it, it's another fifty bucks or ten bucks, whatever. I forget what we what we charge, but you got to have this is a three hundred and fifty watt iron, and it's got the same temperature as your little eighty watt iron because you got to melt, melt solder, and solder melts. The problem, the, the, the advantage to this, and what makes it what makes it usable for coax and PL two fifty nine, it heat retains heat. You take that hundred and fifty watt iron and put it on something with some metal on it like this, it's going to suck. The, it's going to suck the heat right out of that iron tip, and it's not going to do anything. I mean, if you set it down and set that iron on it like that, and went got your cup of coffee and watched the news for a little bit and came back, it might melt it. But this will do it most quickly. And it, it's a little, it's a little tough. This is not plugged in, by the way. Yeah, the bigger the tip, the yeah. easier it works, even yeah. smaller. Now what I could do is, I'll put it now, a clamp. And when I get ready to do that, I get the, the hole that I have that I have uh, roughed up. And get down to the top to the copper layer, and I lock it in there like that. And I can take the tip of that, put it right over it, just like that. Let it sit there for a little bit, and I got my solder flux in there. And then I just do that. And when you come out, it's got a nice, smooth, clean. Spot right, and you only need to do one. Now, if you're uh, uh, an HDD, OCD. yeah, OC whatever type person, and want to do all of them, you can. There's nothing that says you can't, but you only need one. And really, you don't need it because when you screw that thing in there, that 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 shield is making contact. But it's I, I would always solder. Uh, I've got a couple of people that, that are real respected hams around the, the, this community and they do some crazy stuff they don't solder. <laughs> anyway, uh, I say solder. And then of course you're gonna you're gonna solder the tip. And if you notice the way that thing is cut, this tip's not gonna be out there where you have to cut anything off. It's gonna be right to this one. This one got a little bit. And uh, and then when you get through, well, when you get to this stage right here, okay, where you before you solder, before you solder, okay, before you solder, you're gonna go. Oh, we got nothing good. Now, of course, you say, well, why aren't you doing both ends? That's good. Now you're going to bring both ends together, and you're going to check and make sure, make sure you've got ground. Yeah, we've got a ground. And then you're going to make sure that your center conductor, come on. This may not work because I don't have these things soldered. So we'll go in and just... Come on. Why? Huh? 
I know you. I know this thing is not broken. There it is. Okay. Now. Okay. Now, what exactly are you looking at? You know, what looking at for short. Okay. <coughs> if it's open, you're not going. To, you're going to see just that's got a one over there. That's just that's the default when it turn it on. Okay. And when you do that, you're looking to make sure you got continuity. Now you got continuity. It should show all zeros. What does it show? All zeros. So that means it's got continuity. I've had it happen to me. Just one little fiber on that shield crosses over to fix yep. that semiconductor. Yeah. And you got a short there. And you didn't check it. Yep. And, and, it, and it screws it all up, man. You're done. So you do that before you solder. Okay. Now you're going to put it in your device. And you're going to get your nice hot iron. And you can go in there and you're going to solder. And after you've done that, you're going to check it again, just like we just did. Make sure that something didn't go wrong when you were soldering. If you get to, you can on some PL259s, if they're not good ones, now when I say good ones, you're going to pay, you're going to pay, uh, I don't know what amphenols are going for nowadays, but even good, even like these off brands, you, you go into an internet and order 10, you're going to pay right around $50 for them. So they're going to be about five bucks a piece. And I've done that melting the dielectric, man. It should yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It can do it. You can melt that dielectric if you. That's what the problem is. You got to have a good hot iron so you don't keep that heat on there very long. You get a if you get one of those 80, 80 watt irons and you put it on there, like I said, and go watch the news. Come back. You may, may be hot enough and it may do good, but it may also have melted that dielectric in there, especially if it's foam. Foam will melt real quick. So, uh, but so after you get through soldering, before you put it on, climb the tower, put it on there, run it down, and then turn your radio on. What's so wrong? This ain't working right. Well, you want to make sure that this is good, okay? And uh, so you're going you're gonna to check it again with your voltmeter. All right? So that's, that's Pete, this is 213, and uh, uh, would used to be 8. RG8 U, uh, let's see, RG8 U was foam, right? I, I don't remember when one of them was foam, and our plain, just plain RG8 was a solid, solid uh, connector in here. And, uh, or it might have been U was a solid connector, and RG8 A U or something like that was, was foam. And then they got another, come out with another one that had a piece of plastic wrapped around a center conductor and foam on the outside, and it, that, yeah, and that was that was a piece of crap. They didn't last very long, and because if you put it like that, yeah, and, then it was short. and that's the bad thing with foam too. If you got it, if you got it like that, and the sun's out in the sun, the sun gets it hot, and it gets hot, and you're transmitting on it, and it gets hot, and pretty soon that center conductor is going to migrate through that foam, and all of a sudden you got a short, or you got a capacitance problem. And you're wondering what in the world I do? What in the world I do? And it's your penis too. Yeah, and it, yeah, it's and uh, and there's no way to find it unless you've got a OTDR. Well, I mean not an OTDR, a TDR, which is time which is time domain reflectometer. And you can go out and look at a case of coax, and it'll tell you exactly where the short is or the open or whatever. Uh, the OTDR you do that is what we use on fiber. Did the same thing. Uh, now. You gotta watch. I'm gonna send one of these around. Everybody can look down the barrel. <coughs> and if you look down at this at this piece from the inside, you will see, you can see it. You can actually see metal coming into the inside here. So you gotta be careful. Pass it around and let everybody look. <coughs> If we don't get if we don't get through with this part of the, the thing tonight, we'll do we'll do power poles next week. But both of them are good. You got to be careful if you see that because if you put it on RG58 uh, or RG8, you've got a, a adapter that you put in there to fit the coax. Now, 
if you look so what am I looking for here you're talking about that little square of metal yeah right yeah what that's well that's that's open uh -huh. and you and if you're using this adapter I'm trying to get this one loose so you can see what I'm talking about all right what you do with this adapter when you get ready to do it you fold you fold it shield around that adapter and you stick that adapter well you stick that uh, this up in there and goes yeah come on hang on I see why I ought to get my glasses and put my glasses on. I can probably see a little better. <laughs> Come on, what's... Oh, I know why. <laughs> okay. I have already... I have already uh, fixed this one so that it uh, won't happen. But anyway... You can uh, when you uh, let me see this thing. All right. So now you screw this adapter in there, and you want it to make good connection. So you're going to screw it in there and you're going to screw it right up till it's nice. Well on some PL259s when you do that, now where you folded that shield over that adapter is now touching that piece of metal you just saw. Mm -hmm. So now you've got a short. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether this is that way or not. We'll find out. These are, these are pretty good. I, I don't buy cheap. Yeah, it's good. We're good. So, so what I do, uh, since I have had, um, I have had, where'd that go? It's down there somewhere. Ah, let me see it. Okay. So what I, what I do is, I went to the leather store and I bought me a punch. I was gonna punch out leather, get some thin leather and do it, but I found some plastic. And so I punched the hole out uh, in there. And that's why I couldn't get it in that other because that one already had a piece of plastic in there. And it gets jammed up in there and it's not coming out. So what I do is before I put all that in there. put the piece of plastic over and now I have insulated my shield from that little spot and you can go to, you can go to the leather store and get one that's the right size to go in that in there and it works out and you can get a little soft plastic off of something anything uh, and that cures forever you get the short right there but you still at the same time uh, you've got to uh, double check that with your bolt ohm meter just like you would the other now this one you don't have that problem and the reason is when you use this crimp on like this it actually goes around the outside the shield goes around the outside and uh, and down <laughs> yeah and then you push that on it like so, you crimp it, solder it, and it's ready to go. But again, I would not use a crimp on like this. Anything that you're going to put up that you want to, that you're going to leave up. You know, like if you've got a tower, you're going to string an antenna, and it's going to you're not going to plan to. This is okay for jumpers. Mm -hmm. The stuff that you're going to put in there, you're not going to play with. It. It's not going to be out in the weather. I don't know where the, where you can even buy these. Like I said. When they closed down the radio shop, they had a whole two two brand new bags of a hundred of the small ones and 
the uh, ones for 213. I've got plenty with the 213. I don't you ever use, I don't ever use it on 213. Got to have a right kind of crimp too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is, the crimper is important. I, I, yeah. I bought some of the, you know, some of the connectors at Freefest or something yeah. that didn't have the crimper. Thought, oh, I'll just use a screw, you know, you can use pair anything. of pliers or something. Yeah, but you crimper can use makes anything. a big difference. I mean, uh, even some, you, you can buy some of these uh, uh, wire strippers like this right here in the handle. They got places where you can crimp. That's good, but the, the the crimp. I didn't bring one that's crimped, did I? No. Um, the uh, crimpers work great. They they, they crimp it in a height in a hexagon type mm -hmm. shape. And uh, uh, I bought a I bought a kit and it's got about five or six different jaws mm -hmm. inserts that you can put in the jaws for different like doing uh, RG6 for video and that kind of stuff. Yeah, but it's and, it's uh, worth if you're gonna do it if you're gonna yeah yeah if you're gonna do a lot and I've done a lot over the years and that's the reason why I've got this stuff. Is that uh, I hate to even, I'd hate to even think how many coaxes I put ends on over the years, especially the five years that we were in business. Uh, go to Ham Fest and go, well, I'm 100, 100, 100 feet of coax. Okay, sure enough, I'll roll it off for you. Uh, can you put the ends on it? <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, we first year I think we did it for free, and then I said, man, it's too much work to do it for free. <laughs> Did you have so. the 8x cable there? Hmm? I don't have any 8x cable. Uh, That's what I was buying. Uh, I can get two two foot RG 8x for. Uh, well, I got three. They're 28.49 a piece. The two of them. A piece. A piece. <laughs> a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, half of that. Half of that. Well, over half of it is the connectors. And the and the, and the now. You go to DX Engineering. That's what and, I'm looking at. Yeah, and that's it. You can take that, and if you'd like, for instance, if you know you got need 60 feet of coax, you can order 60 feet of coax, and they'll put the bins on it for you. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I don't say they do it for free, but in the price of what you're buying, yeah, you can do it. Because if you go buy the ready-made stuff, you're either going to be in 100 foot, 75 foot, 50 foot, 25 foot, and you know you don't want if. Uh, if you need if you need an eighty foot piece, you don't want to coil up twenty feet of it, you know. So that's a great idea. I have not ordered any from any coax from uh, DX Engineering, but uh, everything I've ever bought from them has been good stuff. Oh yeah, uh, everything so, I have is from DX. Yeah. It's, it's all good. about the only place you can get that kind of stuff nowadays. Pretty much. Uh, any questions? Anything you didn't understand? Yeah. Yes. Do hams weatherize their connectors, the external ones? Like yes. On a, on a yeah, always, wheel? always, always. Wrap it's going it to go in. outside. You need to, if nothing else, it needs to a, a couple layers of electrical tape. Uh, heat shrink, electrical tape. Well, you do heat shrink, but heat shrink still. You, if you, even if you heat shrink it, put a couple layers of electrical tape. Yeah. And maybe we uh, use Scotch coat. And you, well, you can buy, you can buy, what is that? Soft stuff that they can buy. God, I can't think of it right now. There's stuff out there that's you put that on there, and it, as as it gets hot later on, it molds into a solid piece, yeah. and it's a pain to get loose when you if you need to. Mm -hmm. And when you start when you start with your electric tape, start in the middle and go this way, and then come back over here, and then back to the middle. And essentially, if you do that, you got four layers of tape. That's that's an old telephone company uh, trick. So you know, that way you got you know if you sit just sit there, wrap one L or anything you know. But if you go up here, it and back to the middle, it essentially gives you four layers of tape. Uh, we used to put friction tape on top of that because final table in the out in the, out in the weather will sometimes unwind. So we put used to it's hard to find friction tape anymore. It's a cloth based, and uh, but it it does not unravel. Uh, so if you ever find any of it someplace, I've never looked for it because I use uh, I use that sealing stuff and and uh, good uh, good tape, uh, vinyl tape.
Matter of fact, I'm out of it. I'm out of, out of my good telephone company team. <laughs> when I retired, I took, I came back one day after my taking my vacation and holidays and that stuff, because I figured I was gonna turn in all my tools and they're gonna hit inventory and everything else. I walked in and my boss said, what are you doing here? I said, well, I came back to turn in my ID card and that kind of stuff. He said, well, I'll take your ID card and your keys. You can get out of here. So I went to my truck and I took my toolbox and everything with me. And, uh, and all the tape and all the all of the uh, cable ties, everything that was on my truck that I thought I could get away with, I took it home with me. <laughs> and uh, um, so and I'm out of all of it now. So I have to go buy it like everybody else does now because I can't even get into the office anymore. They got to have them, all of them locked up. I can't. Get even now, now you know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, that was that was the way it was. Guys retired, they come in and get a box of towels, get a couple of a couple of cans of wall spray. You know, and nobody said nobody said anything about it. And uh, but now they got now this new company took over. They got it all locked. And they're up. making money now. <laughs> no, they're not either. Not after my phone went out a week ago Tuesday, and I just got it fixed yesterday. And uh, that's not the way. That's not way the. That's not the way the company I work for worked. If you you're called in a, a trouble, if a you copper called, line? Is that what you're talking about? Huh? You're talking about a copper line? Is that what you're yeah, talking about? Yeah. yeah. Well, you're lucky you still have one. Yeah. Most of the time, well, they, I, they're I, trying I, to get rid of it. That hard as, they're trying as hard as they can to get rid oh, of it. Oh, I know they are. Well, yeah. see, the problem is that was granted me for retiring yeah. with 40 years. Yeah. So until they. Provide me with something else. I'm yeah. going to keep that copper line. I had my copper line go down a few years ago, and I had to write a letter to the uh, FCC before they would. All of a sudden, when I did that, all of a sudden it was just. Oh yeah. They just got on it like you wouldn't. Well, you got. But you, before you, that, it was going to be like we gotta, don't have the parts. We don't know when they're going to get them. It you might know, be a month. It back in nine, back in 1984, they divested the Bell system. Yeah. Well, after all that stuff. All the legal illegalities and everything. Guy at Southwestern Bell started buying up all of the little baby bells, and so he's bought them all now, mm -hmm. or several years ago. That's been twenty years ago now. And what he's got together now in a conglomerate that, that is now called AT and T, but it's little AT and T. It's bigger than what the original AT and T was, but he owns them all. Mm -hmm. And they are not, they are not the same company that I work for. Yeah. You call it if you got if you called a case of trouble in before three o'clock in the afternoon, they got dispatched that day. Yeah. Now I call mine in, and they say, "Well, it would be, be July the 9th. So I've been sitting there for ten or ten days. Of course, I got cell phones. I wasn't totally out of, out of whack. But, uh, they, they want you to get rid of. They want you to get frustrated. Get oh yeah, they, well, the, that's what they were trying to do. The to final mi the final mile, which is copper, yeah, is the most expensive thing they've got out there that costs them the most money. Yeah. And uh, all right, that's enough about that. I got other things to talk about. All right, let's um, let's get rid of this stuff, and we'll talk about power poles. Now everybody's probably already using power poles. Invention ever do what? Best invention ever. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm sure if most everybody. Matter of fact, most every manufacturer now uh, that's up on it is uh, is providing power poles with with all of their equipment because everybody's using it. Uh, Pretty much, and but and they've also taken advantage. They've also taken advantage of you. It's got a 40 amp fuse in it, so this is what I would put in if I was making a power cord for my 100 watt HF radio. Okay. Uh, there's pluses and minuses about whether you should use a fused uh, power cord or not. Here's another one. This is just an extension cord, but I have it's it's fused. 
Uh, and again, like I say, there's pluses and minuses uh, about that. Uh, you really want it fused if you short something out. Now, if you're only making a power cord about that long and it's going to just go right there, you, like I say, there's pluses or minuses. I don't use a lot of, if I'm going to put something in my vehicle, I'm going to fuse it. Uh, here's, here's another one, got a T connector for most every two meter radio that's manufactured has this T connector. So uh, I made a, an adapter here that I can adapt to a cigarette lighter plug if I wanted to. Uh, there's my Kenwood ICOM. And I guess I imagine the ASU uses, mm -hmm. the, uses the same thing too. So that's a, that's a universal kit right there uh, to do it. Uh, this one I made up was uh, uh, I forget what I made this up for, but it I had whatever it, whatever I had it hooked <laughs> up to had a a uh, I, probably a tuner or something that so I made a, a double one up so when I plugged one I had both of them for that particular radio. Now, let's get into some stuff that you can make yourself. Showed you those things in there. there there there's, there's a prime example. Okay. Let's see it. Oh, okay. And I fused it because these were mounted. Uh, these were mounted on the back side. And the radio was here. And it was mounted back there. So I wanted something that was fused and go down to a power supply or whatever. And that's what, so I made those. And when, when we got, when we moved locations, I took these out instead of leaving them for to go to the jump. Uh, all right, let's, okay. These are some, you can buy those, power works. I got one of those mounted up on the shelf on my ham desk, so if I'm working something there to death but I need power, I just plug into it. I have power. Um, there's another one that if you want to, that's one that you can plug into an extension cord like that and feed three or four or five different things. Those are all expensive. This is about 50 bucks, and this one's about 30. A little expensive. Here's one I made for myself. Plug it right into the cable. Now I can run six things off of that. And it's just a, it's simple to make. Got, I used to, you can go to a hobby shop and get some solid brass rod. And when you stick your, I use number 14 electric wire to, to in there to stick down and get it and cut it off. And I just put a piece of, uh, you can get this load or something, it's just plain, some sort of tubing. And just cut it and then I put, I put silicone in there and put it on there. There you go. A lot cheaper than that. Uh, let's see, that's another one of those. Uh, what else have I got in here? We'll talk about this in a minute. Now this one, this one, I went ahead and just made it on the end of the wire. That's only a fiber, this other one's a six. You can do them as you want. But it's nice, like on field day, you can plug in the power supply and then run all your peripherals off of one cable, as long as there's not a lot of amperage. Um, I mean, you, you can put as many amperage as you want to it, but um, uh, it hooks to a battery. It's a little AC to, TC to AC inverter. Makes a nice little, if you need it for a field day, when you got something that's got them, you plugged into AC and you're running battery, there's your deal. I got that. I forget where I got that. I got that. I think I got that at uh, uh, AutoZone. 
All right, now here's the big thing. I think I've shown you these before. Pass, pass, pass it around. This is what that started out to be, or started from. Okay, buy this auto zone. And this is a newer, newer version than that. It's got lights on it. When you want something shorts out, the little red light comes on. But this is this is one I've modified. So I can put my power supply in here, and I've got six circuits, and I can fuse them however I want to. Uh, I've got 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 40 amp circuits in there. And you can mount, you know, if you could do it in your car, you can mount this up under the dash or someplace where you can get to it and you can run everything you want to in your car, ham radio wise, off of this one thing. Of course, I would use, probably I would use six or eight, number six or number eight wire from your battery to here. Uh -oh. Question for you, Dan. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> your connector in here, is it uh, your uh, Anderson uh, pin? To a blade connector, so you slide it on there. Is that how it's set up? No, no. Like you can't see it, but I have run down. Did, yeah, okay. Yeah, you, you're right. This was a blade connector at one time that you slid on. Okay. I flattened them out. Okay. Okay, you can see on this one how those blade connectors work. Okay. Well, I flattened them out. And I drilled holes through them. They've got holes in there, but they're not big enough. Well, no, those are big enough. But under the bottom here, oh, it's, I think I think I need. I think I need this. I didn't realize I had one that was not covered in felt. Amen. Now, I've got to, to be trans perfectly transparent. I did not think of this idea. Billy Freeman came to me. Those of you who know Billy Freeman, uh, he came to me one time and he said, "What can we? How can we do?" And I, I said, "Well, let me look at it and see." He had the idea to do this. He just didn't have the. Well, this one's one of the first ones I did. So you can see I, I ran wire, mm -hmm. and, and that's far. that's the negative side. The, po the positive side's already in there. Here's the positive side, and it automatically goes to this side of the fuses. And uh, so I did that to the negative side. Now, what? Uh, I can't take another one loose because most of them are. Most of them are. Uh, I think. Yes. This is a piece of copper strap that they use for uh, grounding. If you can see, it's copper you're looking in there. So what I have done, what I've done to the rest of them, I know y'all, I'll come over there in a minute, is I put this in like this. Let's move this far. And make a, yeah, make a bus, bus down there. Um, this one I just used regular copper wire and it's probably a lot easier than putting this, uh, let's see, normally it would go this way, across there, and then I go up there. And then all of the negative, all of these negative side, as I drilled the hole all the way through this, and soldered onto this to get the negative side in. Do it. But those things work good. I've got one mounted in my truck, it's been there for ages. Uh, and you know, it's fused, so you can put, you know, this is not, I wouldn't put more than about 20 amps through this 
cable right here, but you could use, if you look at the one I passed around, I think it's got number 12 or number 10 or 12 on it. So it can, it can take a lot more, a lot more current than, than, uh, than what I would put through this uh, small one here. So, if you bought something like this from PowerWorks, and they have things like this, uh, not not in this design, but fused multi, I think the cheapest one I had, the, I had all of them written out <coughs> at one time, and the cheapest one was like 119. <coughs> yeah. This this you device see, from, uh, from uh, AutoZone is about 15 dollars. And if you use the if you use the copper wire like that first one is like this one is, it doesn't cost you anything. Now, again, I was lucky. This was uh, this copper strap here was stuff that we used in the phone company to when they cut a cable and had had to splice a cable and they put everything on it. They ran this copper strap across to run to make ground continuous, and I just picked up a roll of it. And, this is what I use. And, uh, but you can go to the hobby shop and you can buy brass. You can buy brass sheets that you could cut with, you know, uh, metal cutters and do the same thing. Probably work better than this because this is kind of thick and it's a little hard to maneuver inside that little space you got there. And you get some of that, some of that brass like that that's real thin uh, then it's probably a little, little easier to, uh, to operate. Okay, this is what I wanted to talk about next. Everybody likes to have battery backup. And <clears throat> Astron used to sell battery backup power supplies. I think they still do. But if you happen to have an old power supply, you can build your own battery backup which is what this is. Uh, your load. Alright, this is uh, this is your 12 volt power supply or so forth. These would go to your battery. Now what this does is while you're hooked up and you've got 12 volts coming in here going to your radio, it's also going out and charging your battery. When you lose when you lose your 12 volts here, the battery automatically, it's automatic. You, you can do it on your radio, your radio won't even see it change. It's automatic. Now, what's in here? I tell you, I have to kill you. <laughs> what's in there is Ooh. Or, if you got a little more higher amperage, that's a 30 amp full bridge rectifier. Okay. <coughs> this is half of a bridge rectifier. All right, the load, the load goes right there. Uh, 12 volts comes in right here battery hooks up right there so when you 12 volts and it's on there it's going through a 10 ohm resistor okay so if you use ohms law 12 volts 10 ohms then it's going to be charging at what 120 mils 120 mils that may be a little bit too much depends on what size battery okay usually charge a battery at about about one tenth of its output so you could put 20 ohms here and knock it down to 60 mils if you wanted to whatever you wanted to do. this is so so it goes through there now it doesn't it can't come back this way this 
diode is, I mean, this diode right here is protecting the power supply from the battery going back into it. Keeps the battery from bleeding off into the power supply. Well, the 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 two, the it depends the two of them bucking each other, okay? So when you lose 12 volts here, now the battery comes back, and this this diode is also protecting the battery to have the full 12 volt current. So that when they got 12 volts here, it has the only place it can go to charge the battery is through this resistor. Now when that voltage is gone, it's a straight shot back to your load from the battery. And it's done, like I say, it's done automatic. This is this is wired exactly the same, it's just with a different, different. Uh, this is your 12 volts, okay? Uh, this is where your load would go, and this is where the battery would go. And it's basically the same, same, same circuit as this, just made it a different way. And, you know, you can put that inside a power supply and screw it to the, you know, and, and, run, the, and run it out to a, to a junction and so forth and so on. Uh, and this is not my design. Uh, I, no, well, no, wait a minute, no, no, this, no, you're, this is not my design. This is Astron's design. This is exactly how the battery backup and the Astron power supply is, is done. It's not done this way, it's done with one of these. Like there. And like I say, you can put whatever size resistor you want here, whatever, depending upon what charge current you want uh, going into your battery. And this one, if you put two batteries uh, in parallel, your charge current's going to go to the battery that needs it the most. So you're not going to get an even charge on two batteries in parallel. Okay, so now this one you can because you can put this one to one battery that has got its own circuit. Put this one to the other battery, it's got its own circuit. But when the power goes off, both of them come back through and go out and it's load. So you can charge two batteries at the same time doing this. It's just got it's got two of these in there. They both connect to the B plus and the, the load parts of this connect to here. So that as long as you've got B plus, it's just going straight to the load and with whatever size resistor you've got putting current to your battery. When you lose your B plus and the power goes out, then the battery comes automatically back to here and powers. So these are things you can do with, with, uh, with power poles. We've got 10 minutes, so I want to talk about one other thing before we close down so you guys can get the meat before it starts. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see that box down there from AutoZone. Yeah, that one. No, I don't need that. Just the... All right. I couldn't see what he was talking about. Everybody's got ground. You can get these. <clears throat> these, are, these, are, these are ground. That's not the one I want. These are ground... Uh, ground buses. These are ground buses for... Uh, um, Electric uh, panel, and all I've done is got me some plugs, PVC plugs, and uh, made me some standoffs. Now, what I would do, I've got regular machine screws in here now, but what I would do is I would get me some wood screws and just screw it to the back of my table or whatever. I don't know how you, what you guys, you may not want to do that. So you can do it this way, and I'll glue them. But you got to have a square, because these things are not easy to turn. But you just put your yeah, come on. Put your put your wire in there. Take it and you can run to your ground, or bring your. What what I would do if I was doing this is I'd bring my I would bring my ground right straight into there and then just whatever you need to ground okay <coughs> and you need to ground to protect your radio um, this is a whole other class but nothing you can do is going to protect you from a direct lightning strike okay. 
What this will protect you, help protect you from is what they call secondary discharge. If lightning hits a tree out in the back 40, it's going to change the polarity of everything. Whatever the polarity was, the lightning is the reason it happens. Is the, the, the charge has gotten built up so. So wherever that lightning originates from back up to the clouds is going to go to the neutral, but everything around it is still charged. And when it goes opposite polarity, then everything's going to want to jump to it. So that's where this will help you. And I, I never didn't think about it one day. One day it was thundering about my house and rain was coming and gutters were overflowing, so I knew the downspout was was clogged up. Well, I had a metal metal rod and was bent like a shepherd's crook, so I could go up there and clean out the the downspout. Well, I'm up there cleaning out the downspout, and the lightning hits in the woods woods uh, behind my house. Next thing I know, I'm on the floor next uh, across the park uh, uh, carport, and uh, so. I, and that was secondary discharge. That wasn't being struck by lightning, but that was all my house and those gutters and everything else at such a high polarity to where it was so negative the other place, they just flopped over. So it happens. So this is what protects, and it also protects you because if something were to happen, that something in the chassis, that radio on the AC side got to the chassis, got to the, the cover of that radio, and you reached in there to touch it, you get a surprise. Well, by having it grounded, you, you don't have that. Hopefully, if it's a high enough potential that shorts, it will throw the breaker or something on your on your AC, and you'll have to, you'll have to look, find out what it is. Um, so it's always good to have that. This is what you normally this is what you're normally going to see, but you can you can find some. That, are, that have regular screws. Well, it did the same thing. Yes? <clears throat> How do you hook up your other end of it? Do you use a number 10 wire or, or something? Built well, I, you, know, you, you don't have to use number 10. I think this is, I think this is number 10 here. That's just something I had. Uh, I've, got, I've got some stranded number 10 at the house. It's orange so that I know that that's ground wire. Uh, actually, green would be better because that's what the electrical standard is for a household. That green is ground, and uh, it's not neutral; it's ground. Uh, so, so you go from that uh, to the wall or to the window to the post outside. Well, yeah, whatever your ground source is. Preferably, it's directly to a ground rod or or to your uh, MLGW. Uh, the ground would be the best if you have it. If you got to run 50 feet, you better off put the ground rod right outside your window or whatever. Uh, avoid, avoid using the the neutral in in the house water. Uh, now, in the modern stuff now, they're using the three wire electric wire, so you got uh, white goes to neutral, black goes to hot and green goes to ground so if you got that then yeah you can you can do that but I, that's a lot of ground throughout all your whole house <coughs> and i really i really would prefer and i think it, if you read about it uh, i hope that some of this stuff that we're talking about in these classes you you might get on the internet and do some research on your own you know like i said you're gonna find nine million You'll, you'll find nine million hits on whatever you're looking at, and there'll be nine million different opinions. But you can still read them all and <clears throat> come up with your own opinion. But because um, I can't cover in an hour and a half, I can't cover. I can't cover that much.